So when we look at statics, it's important to uh, keep in mind these things. Um, when we calculate the forces acting on uh, on and within structures um, that are in equilibrium, that's when we're talking about statics. So the force of gravity, uh, you know, is on every object. Some have more forces than others. And so when we look at these, uh, that'll be true. And when we talk about uh, equilibrium, the first condition of equilibrium, um, we have to look at the fact that the sum of the forces in the X and Y are zero. Sometimes we'll uh, have two equations for two unknowns as we look at that. And um, we'll go ahead and start out with uh, this problem here, where we have a chandelier um, hanging from a ceiling. And we have a, a two forces acting here, the force applied up at an angle with the rope to the ceiling, and then FB with the force of the rope to the right there, and then the, we have the force of gravity down on the chandelier. And what we want to find out is what is FA and what is FB? And so what we're going to do, um, we know that it's in equilibrium, so there's no acceleration. You know, the chandelier is being held up by these two forces. And what we can do is we can set up our forces in the X and Y and, you know, figure out what's going on. So let's go ahead and write out the forces in the X equals MA in the X and the forces in the Y equals MA in the Y. So... In the x direction, we have um, the positive FB. We want to set up the, you know, what's positive and negative. So positive, negative here, positive in the Y, negative in the, negative in the Y, just negative. Okay. So positive FB plus, um, if we look at this here, right, we have FA, that is, we are going to have to break down in the X and Y component. So we have FA in the X, which is in the negative, so negative FAX. And then that all balances out to be zero. In the y direction, we have the positive FAY plus the negative force of gravity. That's balanced as well, right? So when we look at that, we have, you know, the force of gravity here, 1960, 1960 newtons plus FAY. So it turns out that the force applied in the y up here counteracts the force of gravity. So we know what FAY is then. And if we look at the X direction and we look at, you know, FAX here, we know FA is the hypotenuse. So to get FAX, uh, cosine is addition of the hypotenuse, right? So the cosine of uh, well, this is an alternate interior. It's 60 degrees up here. It would be 60 degrees down here. So cosine of 60 equals adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is FA. So, yeah. So in here, we would have um, cosine, negative cosine 60 times FA plus FB equals zero. And knowing this, right, we know what FAY is. So if we set up our triangle... Uh, F A Y. We know what that is. We can find what F A is using trig, the 60 degrees. And then once we know that, we can place it in here and figure out what F B is. So when we do that, we get F A as uh, 2263.21. So that's F A. And here I just left this in variable form, FA times sine of 60, it's the opposite side. And so that's FA, which we can now bring in here. So FB is 1,131.61 newtons. Okay, so in this one, what is the minimum tension strength an engineer would need to use for a stage light that is hung by two wires in an auditorium? The light's mass is 400 kilograms. There are two wires that can be hung. What is it, or what it is, one is at 38 degrees to the ceiling and the other is 29 degrees to the ceiling. So let's go ahead and draw that. 
and we've got our you know two wires here, one at 38 degrees, one at 29 degrees. Now in this one, we have two forces at an angle. So as we consider this one, we're going to have to look at that and uh, and break it down and and try to figure out uh, what they are. So let's go ahead and call um, the one on the left FA. We'll call the one on the right FB. So let's put it in variable form, FAY, FAX, FBX, and FBY, acting on the, the stage light. We can set up our sum of the forces in the X and Y. So in the X, we have the positive FBX plus the negative FAY in the Y direction. Well, then we can you know, uh, set those equal to each other. Um, yeah, in, the, in terms of the trig, this is what we're going to do. So FAX, right? That's the adjacent side over here. So we use the cosine. Cosine equals adjacent over the hypotenuse. So the cosine of 38 times the hypotenuse here, which is FA. So cosine of 38 is again, uh, you know, this angle, this angle is 90 degrees. And then we can subtract from 180 to get this one down here. 38 degrees is the angle. Same, same thing to figure out the angle over here. And yeah, so we don't know either, right? We don't know what FB is, and we don't know what FA is, but um, it's a lot better than having, you know, four unknowns, FAY, FAX, FBX, FBY. What we're going to do in the Y is the same thing. We have the F positive FBY positive, plus the positive FAY plus the negative force of gravity. And then we're going to put those in terms of trig. So we have FB times the sine of 29 to get the opposite side over here. And then FA times the sine of 38 to get the side over here, plus a negative MG. So now we have something we can work with. We have um, two unknowns. We don't know what FB is and we don't know what FA is, but we have two equations to be able to do that. So what we can do is, um, you know, use the two equations, two unknowns. Um, we'll just solve for FB over here. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take this and place this in for FB. And when we do that, all we're left with on the right-hand side over here is FA. And we can solve for what FA is. So what I want you to do is go ahead and pause the clip, um, substitute that in there, and see if you can work through the algebra, and go ahead and solve for what FA should be. And once you do that, uh, we'll go ahead and, and make sure that's all set before you do F, uh, or find FA, and then we'll do that, um, and we'll make sure FB is OK. So go ahead and hit pause. and. Um, when you're ready to check, you can hit play to continue. All right, so we'll place that in there and multiply there across the top. So if we multiply sine of 29 times the cosine of 38, we can do that, get a value, and then divide by the cosine of 29. We'll get this value here. And then we have this FA times sine of 38, um, which we can add the FAs together. So FA times 1.0525 and plus, or minus 3920 equals zero. And we can solve for FA. So FA comes out to be 3,724.596. We place that in for FB. And that's the strength FB needs to be. So if the engineers are considering, you know, what the strength that they want, then you know, they're, they're going to want to have some safety margin on top of that. They're not, you're not going to want to have a, you know, a wire that's only 3725, right? You're going to want some safety margin. But the engineers would need to know, you know, uh, how much it would need so that the test of the line, you know, how much, how many, uh, how many newtons this could take, uh, you know, is considered there.